in the spirit of holiness or the Holy Spirit. And I thought that was interesting. The sons of light in John 12, 36, the Huioi Photos, has its counterpart in the Hebrew of the IQS with the Bene Or. Same principle, the sons of light. His parallels are on page 101 and 102 if you get this book. Uh, it's been recently reprinted. It's a great book. A little dated, but not bad. And then his Greek in John 8, 12, the light of life, the tophos tes zos, is equivalent with the Hebrew in the IQS of the beor hahayim, the light of life. Both those phrases have the light of life. So, so there's some very interesting parallel phrases involving this light and darkness. Then he goes through several of them with the darkness. Uh, another one that's really interesting, he has uh, here number 10, to ergatuthiu, the works of God, that's John 6, 28 and John 9, 3, correlate with the ma'asael, the works of God, in the Hebrew of IQS. This theme is that the influence of the light theme in the New Testament theology is based upon the ancient influences. And that's, that's kind of what uh, Charles Worth talks about in his text. Now, I didn't need any popcorn while I was talking about Hebrew. <laughs> What other ding -a ling on YouTube is going to try to make a video and talk while he's eating popcorn? Not like M&M's, they melt in your mouth. The, uh, the very scholarly text by R.B. Onians, The Origins of European Thought About the Body, the Mind, the Soul, the World, Time, and Fate. Outstanding scholarship in this. Cambridge University Press uh, first published in 1951, first paperback edition is 1988. I don't know if you can get this text. But you really need to if you can. Uh, this is by far one of my very favorite books of all time. I've about wore my copy out, darn it. I've, I've got to hurry up and find a, another copy of it. The theme on light that he talks about is it's equated with breath. Now this is very interesting because we breathe the light. Kind of shocking, huh? According to the Upanishads, speech, sight, hearing, and minds were known as breaths. The word is prana. Verily, they do not call them speeches, nor eyes, nor minds. They call them prana. Breaths, because it's the vital breath that is common in all of these. Very interesting that our senses are based on breaths, which is based on light. Because light, of course, brings in the knowledge. Without light, you don't get knowledge. As a unity, the vital breaths, this is on page 75 in his book, the vital breaths, every single one of them, cause to know all things here. All the vital breaths speak along with speeches when it speaks. All the vital breaths see along with sight and the eyes when they see and so on and so forth. He says, Oh, the, the winds of the soul are called vapors. And, and the reason why he's bringing this out is because in Homer, there are survivals of the belief that fire flamed in the eyes. Interestingly, more particularly in anger. And if you read Homer, the Odyssey, and the Iliad, uh, you do catch that with the, with the eyes. The fire in the eyes flow forth. This is the theme. And when we get to the Stoics, we find not only is the soul the fiery breath, and it calls it the pneuma, the Greek pneuma, centered in or around the heart. That's an interesting Jewish touch, isn't it? The heart in Judaism, in the Hebrew of the Old Testament, means mind as well as our heart. Very interesting. The Jews are big on the feelings of the soul based in the heart. 
rather than the head, and it's because of the, the materiality as breath or spirit is equivalent to the logos, speech, talking, and it's all material based on physical light. I, I think that's interesting. The spirit is based on material. There's no immaterial spirit here any more than there is dark light. He gets over here to uh, Thales and Oceanus on page 249 of his text. He says, The procreative element in any body was the psyche, and this appeared in the form of a serpent. Now, this serpent was a liquid. It was the procreative power. It was symbolic. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It was symbolic of the procreative power. And it encircled not only the earth, but the entire cosmos, this serpent. Now, you can see this theme when you study the, the Greek mythology, Oceanus, of course, the serpent around the circle of the universe. It's very interestingly based on the Aztec calendar also, those two great big serpents circling the circle of reality. It's, it's kind of interesting. He talks about the uh, Roman Orbis Terrarum, and it was apparently so conceived by the early Greeks as a disc or a cylinder. The great round, the rim of Oceanus, he says, flows so that the stars are washed by the water. <laughs> Very interesting. See, they, they considered the heavens water, as the Genesis account does, the great deep. The, uh, the uh, darkness was over the face of the deep. And then he says, he talks about the dome a little bit. Well, this theme of the light, it's a band. The serpent uh, wraps around the egg. And this is the uh, 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 fanes, the interesting uh, symbolism of fanes, standing there with the egg and the serpent circling around the egg. I actually made a, uh, I made a piece of pottery with that symbolism. Let me go get it real quick. I'll show it to you. It's fascinating stuff. It's the idea of light encircling the cosmic egg. It's fascinating stuff. Hold on. This is the cosmic egg. Who knew my pottery would actually come in handy for a video? This is cool. Of course, I, I represented the cube of space here. And then on this side is uh, John Dee's Monus Hieroglyphica in its, its original, and then I broke it down to the different parts. And then around the rim, of course, I was copying the, uh, I was following in the direction of the uh, Sefer Yetzirah with the permutation of the of the divine name Yahweh, Y-H-V-H. -H. Notice how when you line the letters up, it looks like a person. Here's the head, here's his arms, his shoulders, his torso, and his legs. The man Yahweh. And then, of course, you can see the serpent around the egg. And then the triangle, of course, the circle within the triangle is a very important mystical thing. But so this is the, this is the principle of the cosmic egg being circled by a being of light. Now it's interesting that the serpent in antiquity, in many traditions, was the light bringer. This is the wisdom that permeates the universe, encircles the universe. That's fascinating, isn't it? Anyway, there's a piece of my pottery. I like to I like to make pottery that has symbolism and all, so I can, you know, it keeps these things foremost in my mind. You got to keep the eternities in focus, you know. Otherwise, the world will distract us. <laughs> Speaking of distraction, popcorn, you know. Anyway, the uh, Howard Schwartz, Oxford University Press. 2004, The Tree of Souls, The Mythology of Judaism. It's a huge book. It's, all, you know, it's, it's like uh, 600 pages. It's absolutely magnificent. Howard Schwartz discussed the importance of God's lantern as light. This is on page 41. And how Israel took, how God took Israel out of Egypt he took the lantern and he went before them. As it is said, Yahweh went before them, Exodus 13, 21. So God escorted his descendants 40 years in the wilderness. He was like a father holding a torch for his son, or like a master holding a torch for his servant. In